it doesn't have to, you know, be a big chunk mm-hmm. of time. It can live in the little moments of your day. And that's actually really powerful because then you're always filling that cup. Yeah. Um, so if you imagine like a leaky faucet and you put a cup under it, you walk, you know, it's dripping, the water's dripping into this cup. You walk away and you come back, like each little drop filled that cup to, till it's, you know, about to overflow. And so that's what's happening when we sprinkle our days with self-care, right? We do these little things and they're filling that cup. Hi everyone. And welcome to a brand new episode of She's Got It Together. I'm your host, Jessica. And I'm Samantha. Each week, we peel back the curtain on what it really looks like to have it together. From the messy moments to the milestones, we're here to share it all. So grab your favorite drink, get comfy, and let's dive into today's topic. Hey guys, I'm Samantha, and I'm here with our co-host, Jessica, and the lovely Catherine Wild. And today we are going to talk a little bit about mom guilt. I know like as a new mom, I've experienced mom guilt. As a seasoned mom, we experience mom guilt. And just like being able to sprinkle our day with self-care, I think is so huge and just being able to take that time for yourself. So Catherine's going to share a little bit about that with us today. So I'm going to turn it over to Catherine. And do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Sure. First of all, thank you so much for having me here. I'm so excited to to chat with you about mom guilt. It's such a big topic for so many of us as moms. Um, but yeah, I'm Catherine Wild. I'm a homeschooling mom of three girls and the founder of Soul Care Mom and the best-selling author of Reclaiming Your Inner Sparkle. And I am so, so passionate about helping women to find themselves again in motherhood, to be able to carve out time to do the things that they love without the mom guilt, all while being the mom that they want to be. And I truly believe that you can feel calm and find your unshakable confidence as a mom when you first care for yourself. So I'm excited to explore this with you guys. I love that. I'm so excited too, because I feel like this is definitely going to like help me too, because I'm a first time mom. I'm uh, to my 18th month old son, Bo, and then I'm also pregnant. Now I'm six months pregnant with a baby girl. So we have like, I have all this time with my son and now I'm like a little worried about like giving up all that, you know, one-on-one time with him for the new baby coming in and how he's going to handle it. And so I feel like there's also like that kind of level of mom guilt too. Like, oh, am I not going to have enough time for my, my, you know, firstborn? But if you just want to like explain a little bit about like what mom guilt is, I think that'd be really helpful for some of our listeners. Yeah. So, you know, we've all heard of guilt, but mom guilt is this feeling of doubt or worry or this insecurity that so many of us experience about our choices and actions as it relates to motherhood. And it can Mm -hmm. manifest in a variety of ways. So, you know, feeling guilty for taking time for yourself, feeling like a bad parent, right? Like you're saying, Mm -hmm. like, how will I manage this time between two kids? Um, Feeling guilty for not doing everything we think we should. And Mm -hmm. mom guilt can stem, you know, from external pressures, societal expectations, this feeling like we need to maintain the perfect home, cook healthy meals, raise well-behaved children, also juggling Mm -hmm. the career and other responsibilities, this pressure to say yes to all of the things and it can also be known as people pleasing too like that can Mm -hmm. help there as well (laughs) but mom guilt can be feel so overwhelming and you we might even feel guilty about wanting to let go of mom guilt because we've been kind of taught that feeling guilty and worrying about everything when it comes to parenting is the sign of being a good parent so there can even be this conflict there yeah Um, Mm -hmm. and then guilt you know around self-care can show up too when you're craving, you know, doing something for yourself, whether it's just resting or doing some cre- something creative, or maybe you want to take some time to work out or take a nap, right? Try out a new hobby. But even considering these things sometimes can bring up guilt. Like I really should be spending time with my kids or there's so much to do around the house. I couldn't possibly take time for myself, right? Yeah. And then mm-hmm. there's guilt around asking for help. So maybe, you know, you recognize there's so much to do. It'd be so great to have some help. Um, So you could have time for self-care, but there might be these competing thoughts like asking for help is a sign of weakness. You know, I should really be able to do this all myself. Um, Yeah. So there's so much that, that can encompass mom guilt. Yeah. I feel like, and that in itself can make it so overwhelming for moms because they are thinking like all these different forms of mom guilt, like show up and you're 
just trying to like figure it out, especially like as a first time mom or a seasoned mom, I think everyone experiences mom guilt and you can experience it in different ways. And just like the whole self care bit, it's like you feel guilty when you just need a minute or I just need this like, yeah. you know, 15 minute walk or this 30 minute workout or, mm-hmm. you know, I just want to like catch up with friends and go to brunch. Like you feel bad for wanting that time, like for yourself away from your kids or your spouse and you're, and you're trying to like, figure out like, is it okay that I like want to have this time away? But when you think about it, if you don't have that time for yourself, and if you're not making yourself a priority, you're not going to show up for your kids or your family, you know, a hundred percent, like you're going to be, you know, cranky or resentful or tired, or you just like, you will take things out on them because you're not getting that time for yourself. So like, it's actually a benefit to have that, like make that time for yourself because it helps your family too. But as women, as moms, it's almost like a double-edged sword. Like you have to try to figure out how to make that part of your day without feeling guilty about it. So I think this is like such a great conversation for us to have. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that balance is hard to juggle for Mm -hmm. sure, especially, you know, when you have so many other things going on that should be getting done that might not be getting done because you're taking the time, you know, just for yourself for a moment. But I notice that I'm more present if I do Mm -hmm. those things, you know, when I'm actually with my family or I'm working on a project, I'm more present, more focused, more in, you know, the moment for that. So everything goes faster, everything goes better, you know, so really taking that little bit of time out for yourself seems like it's made up by that, by the projects going faster or, you know, the moments being better. Um, So I don't think we should be guilty, but I always am. (laughs) (laughs) I think that was, I mean, both of you, like Sam, that was so beautifully said and um, Jessica can relate so much. Like, um, and, and it, that's like a little known productivity hack, right? Like mm-hmm. yes, there's all these like different time hacks and things, but when you really take that time to like, I like to picture like a cup, right? Any sort of cup, like your favorite coffee mug or, or your water bottle. And when you, when you start to take that time to, to fill it up drop by drop, and that's by taking care of yourself. That's by taking that walk that you you're craving. That's mm-hmm. by doing that creative activity. And as you fill up this cup, um, then you actually have something to give, right? You have something to pour from. And so often we're trying to pour from this empty cup, right? Just literally trying to, you know, <laughs> pour from Yes, nothing. it's like so, nothing's yeah. coming out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's how powerful it is to, to, you know, take time to navigate the mom guilt so that you can take that time for yourself and feel good about it too, you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Absolutely. So like when you are like having those thoughts of mom guilt, like how do you handle that to kind of get yourself out of that, mindset and into a more, you know, productive mindset where you can be okay with, you know, the thoughts that you're having. (laughs) (laughs) That's such a great question. Yeah. So, you know, when you first start to note, you know, simply noticing like, oh, okay, mom guilt's coming up for me, or maybe Mm -hmm. even noticing, are there certain situations where it comes up for you often, you know, Mm -hmm. and then as you bring awareness to that feeling of mom guilt, you can start to explore like, where is this idea coming from? And is it actually serving me? Um, Is it empowering me? You know, and Mm -hmm. more often than not, it's an idea that we've been given um, that isn't in alignment with how we want to show up for our kids, for ourselves. It does this. That's why it doesn't feel good within us. right? Right. So if there, you know, if that's the case and you're, it's no longer serving you, you can take a moment to lovingly explore like a more empowering story. So mm-hmm. what a thought. So all of our thoughts and our, our feelings are linked, right? So when you feel that feeling of mom guilt, tracing it to the thought and then noticing, okay, is this how I want to think? Is this, you know, because that's a really empowering thing to know is that you yeah. can change that thought. And that's like, it's amazing, right? So, <laughs> um, but it takes it, it takes a little bit of pausing, a little bit of introspection. So noticing what is the thought and do I want to keep this thought or what would be more helpful? So we can look mm-hmm. at some ideas. So if, you know, maybe something you're thinking is I must do everything perfectly or I'm a bad mother, right? Something more empowering might be I'm doing my best. My best is enough. It's okay to mm-hmm. make mistakes, right? Um, right? Perfection isn't required to be a wonderful mother, right? You can decide <laughs> that feels good in your body. And that's how you'll know if it's, if it's a thought that is more in alignment with you, because it'll feel better in your body, right? It's believable and it feels better. And so, um, 
Or maybe, you know, you're thinking a good mom doesn't get frustrated, doesn't get angry with her children, doesn't yell. Um, and so maybe you can explore something like feeling a range of emotions, including frustration is natural and human. It's how mm-hmm. I handle these things that matters, right? So, um, exploring different, um, thoughts that feel better. And then as you program, reprogram, right. Um, what you're telling yourself, you'll start to notice a shift in how you think it's shift in how you show up a shift in how you're able to take that time for yourself. Right. It's, it's really mm-hmm. powerful. Yeah. I love that. I think just, it's so powerful knowing like you can change that thought that you're having into a more positive one, because I think that's the, it's like as moms, like you are, your mind's constantly going, like you're trying to go yeah, to sleep and sure. you're thinking about all these things <laughs> that you have to do or that you didn't get to today or that you have to do tomorrow. And just being able to like change that narrative and turn things into a more positive approach is so, is so helpful because then you do kind of like slowly release that guilt and that feeling of, you know, maybe not being enough or not getting enough done or not. I it wasn't the best version of like myself today, but you can kind of just be more aware of just like more self-aware that you can change that. And like tomorrow's a new day and things are going to yeah. get better. So I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I think this also like is a good time to kind of talk about self-care and how important that is for like your mental health and like helping with mom guilt and like how, like, how do you find that time? How do you make that time each day to give yourself that little bit of self-care that you might need so that you can be like more positive and have a better outlook on, and like, obviously not every day is going to be perfect and you might not get self-care for yourself every day, or it might look a little different every day, but is there a way that you find that is helpful for you that allows you to get that self-care that you need? Yeah. So self-care was a a huge part of my journey. And, you know, it's this term that we hear really often, Mm -hmm. um, it's like importance kind of gets lost, you know, Mm -hmm. and I had to convince myself that, you know, devoting time to myself, devoting time to my needs was this luxury that I couldn't afford. It was Mm -hmm. selfish. Um, but I slowly started to realize that, you know, by neglecting myself, like we talked about that cup, right. Um, Mm -hmm. I was, I was depleting my reservoir of energy, of patience, of love, everything that I needed to be the mom that I wanted to be. Um, And so I started just playing with doing little things for myself. So it might've just even been pausing, placing my hand over my heart and taking a deep breath. It Mm might've been going to get a cup of water um, or make a cup of tea, or instead of doing the dishes, I would just pause and read a chapter of a book, right? Something really Mm -hmm. simple. Um, it didn't have to take a lot of time. It didn't have to cost a lot of money, right? Like it was mm-hmm. little things that I noticed that I was feeling better. I was kinder with myself. I was more patient with my kids. Um, exactly. It was, yeah. Not despite my self-care, but because of it. So yeah, if, if you are struggling with this and you have this idea that, you know, self-care needs, I need a whole hour, you know, and, and that's mm-hmm. amazing too. So like, if you can go to the spa, or <laughs> whatever it is, go to the grocery store by yourself. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> it doesn't have to, you know, be a big chunk mm-hmm. of time. It can live in the little moments of your day. And that's actually really powerful because then you're always filling that cup. Right. Yeah. Um, so if you imagine like a leaky faucet and you put a cup under it, you walk, you know, it's dripping, the water's dripping into this cup. You walk away and you come back, like each little drop filled that cup to, till it's, you know, about to overflow. And so that's what's happening when we sprinkle our days with self care, right? We do these little things and they're filling that cup. Um, I love that. that. And I think, I think when people think of self care, a lot of the times they think of like, oh, I need a spa day. Oh, I need like all this time. It costs money. Like, I think being able to visualize like the whole sprinkle it through your day is huge because it doesn't have to be this big gesture, this long, like day long spa day or all these things. It can just be like maybe waking up like 30 minutes before your kids to get like some journaling in. It can be like, instead of doing the dishes, I just need a minute. I'm going to go take a break and read a chapter of a book. It can be just going for a walk for 10 minutes. If you can't get a 30 minute walk in, do a 10 minute walk. (laughs) Like it's like, it might not look the same every day. And and maybe like in a season of time, your self-care might be a little shorter or smaller or sparse in times, but you know, it's still there. So I think that's really big is like self-care doesn't have to be this big expensive gesture or this long amount of time. It can just be like a minute long 
something yeah. that makes you feel better. I think that's an interesting point, though, with the season that, you know, I mean, I think yeah. the needs of self-care change throughout the seasons. I mean, mm-hmm. whether it's the seasons with our kids, you know, younger to older or literally the seasons of the year. I mean, sometimes in the winter, we just need more self-care. Like we just need, because we have winter blues or whatever it mm-hmm. might be. We just need a little bit more care for ourselves. Whereas in the summer, it just, you've got the sunshine. It's like every time you go outside, it's a little bit of self-care, you know? Yeah. <laughs> You're absorbing that. Um, so you might not need as much then. But I, yeah, I think that is interesting how it just kind of, what you need changes for many different reasons. I love that point about the seasons of motherhood and of, of just the year. Yeah, that's so... <laughs> true yeah yeah i think i think when just like because we've been doing like different like podcast recordings and stuff today and then my parents are here watching Bo, my son and then they took him to the park so when i like had a break i like came out and they weren't here and then i'm like huh what do i do like i have like 30 minutes of time where i can just like do nothing so I like went outside to my deck and I just like laid like on, I was just like sitting in the chair in the sun because it's a beautiful sunny day today and I'm just like huh ah, this is nice like you know like this doesn't like, feels like yeah and I'm like you know what? I should like do this every day like when Bo's like taking a nap I'm like I should be able to come and sit outside and just like read a chapter of a book or like just like scroll mindlessly on my phone if I want to or just do yeah. nothing so I'm like I'm just like in this little self-care sprinkling era i feel like all of a sudden and She's i'm like this is together great. here i'm getting in the groove here i'm like this is okay i like this <laughs> sounds fun this is fun <laughs> time for yourself. and that makes me think too like you were saying like every day can look different too um mm-hmm. so this morning like i was feeling a little slow like i i didn't feel like i had the energy that i usually have in the morning and so i took it easier so instead you know for as part of my morning routine, I, I try to do some sort of movement, right? And mm-hmm. um, so today I just stretched and I u- used my um, roller, right? Like, and just, just stretched and like, yeah, breathed and, you know, and so um, it can look different in that way too. We don't have to be so hard on ourselves and it looking a certain mm-hmm. way every single day. Yeah. We definitely yeah. build up this image in her mind and try to, you know, create that. And if it doesn't, like m- my big downfall is if something does not work out as I've pictured it, then I'm not happy. <laughs> you know, it's like, it almost feels like you failed or whatever, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's, it's that all or nothing mentality for sure. And it's not how I should be thinking. Oh yeah. Well, you're not alone. Like that. Yeah. Those expectations, like the picture that I have in my head of how things should go and then being disappointed when it doesn't, or feeling like I failed when it doesn't. Um, yeah. Yeah. That can be, <laughs> there, that can be, um, um, disempowering or you know like how, yeah how you lose yeah. steam when you, yeah mm-hmm. yeah and I think too like having like if you have a morning routine or like a schedule that you kind of follow like is that like more helpful where you can kind of like expect kind of like like this is just kind of like how our day looks I know like you kind of have to be flexible and things are going to change but like does having a morning routine kind of help like with making time for the self-care and making, you know, a little bit more, like be more self-aware of the mom guilt. Cause you do kind of know like what the routine is, what the day looks like, but know that there are going to be, I'm sure some bumps in the road, but do you mm-hmm. find having like a routine helps at all? Oh yeah. Yeah. For myself, um, as far as self-care, it helps. And then just, we homeschool mm-hmm. in that way yeah. too. Like my girls have an idea of the flow of the day, you know, the last questions yeah. about, you know, different days yes. are different, but, um, I think that helps so much and it helps with like decision fatigue too, you know, like not having yes. to decide like, this is how this day is going to go and yeah. doing yep. that as you go. Um, you already have so many questions to answer and so many things. To decide, so, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So for me, it really helps. And so what I love to teach as far as morning routines is this, just this three-step formula. It's a framework so that you can plug in what um, feels good to you. Because what I found was mm-hmm. sometimes when I was taking time for myself, I wasn't, um, I wasn't really present in it. I wasn't really nourishing Mm -hmm. all of me. And so I would leave that self-care time feeling still pretty depleted. So Mm -hmm. um, what I like to do and what I like to encourage is starting your day with just some gentle movement. So, you know, you've been sleeping, you wake up, move your body in some way, whether you love going for walks or whether you just want to stretch or do some yoga or whatever Mm -hmm. that looks like for you that day. Um, 
And then, like you were saying, taking time for journaling and sitting down, um, whatever your meditation practice looks like or prayer Mm -hmm. or, um, you know, just getting really still with yourself because a lot of times the day is so noisy (laughs) and our minds are noisy. And when we can slow down enough and, you know, turn down that volume a little, so much is able to come through, you know, like ideas, Mm -hmm. inspiration and creativity and, um, yeah, just so much can come through. And so then, so just taking, it can be five minutes, right? Taking some deep mm-hmm. breaths, listening to a beautiful song or guided meditation, and then writing, um, whatever that looks like. Maybe it's journaling what you're grateful for. Maybe it's journaling what came up for you during your meditation. Um, mm-hmm. and just a few minutes to do something that brings you joy. Those things that light yeah. you up. So yeah, reading that book or whatever it is, maybe you like to paint something. Um, yeah, knit, I, it can be anything. But just spending a few minutes on that if you can. And of course, like if you if you've got a newborn and this is all broken up, you can you can make that fit throughout your day too, right? It doesn't all have to be in one chunk either. But um but yeah, I that's how I love to start my days. (laughs) I think that's a good point that you just made too, because like I'm about ready to have, you know, in August an infant, a newborn baby. So it's like your mornings, your day like your days are going to look different it's going to (laughs) change so it's like when your kids are a little older or like you're done having kids and like you kind of get into the groove in this like morning routine it's easier to kind of have like a scheduled like session in the morning or something but it's a good point that it doesn't have to necessarily be in the morning if you can't fit it in in the morning as long as you get it in sometime throughout the day just to kind of make that time for yourself you know, it's still just as important, whether it's in the morning or sometimes people like to journal at night and talk about how their day went so that they're more present for the next day and things that they could, you know, improve on or do better or, you know, however you want to look at it. So I think it's, it's important that it doesn't have to look the same every day or like with the seasons, like when you have certain times throughout your life where maybe like you have to change your routine and you have to be more flexible, like that's okay. (laughs) Yeah. 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 It's all about just setting yourself, like when you're, you know, helping your child learn to use the potty, you do your best to set them up for success, right? You're going to have the little potty nearby. You're going to have the extra clothes. You're going to have all the things. (laughs) Um, And so how can we do that for ourselves? Maybe it's, Mm -hmm. if we want to go for a walk, can we lay out the clothes? If we are in the newborn season and it's really hard for us to get even a minute, can we ask, you know, our partner um, for, you know, 30 minutes every day when he comes home, you know, whatever that looks Mm -hmm. like so that you can have that time for yourself. And just like you would, you know, schedule the dentist appointment and you would show up for that, right? Right. right. We want to do that for ourselves too, because yeah. that's how important it is. Like to, as as we, I think we've hit on really well here. Is so important yeah. to care of ourselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I think that's great. Yeah, you know, just making yeah. sure that you're scheduling because it's not just going to happen. Like right. you have to right. actively create the time for this. I think that's important to remember. Yeah. And being able to like lean on your spouse or your partner or your family, like your support system, being able to kind of like bring them in. And like, I think as moms, as women, like you said, sometimes it can be seen or we make it up in our head that it's a weakness to ask for help. And we, if we can't handle all the things and like we're failing as a mother or as a partner and it's okay to ask for help, like it's encouraged to ask for help Mm -hmm. for, for you and yourself and being able to lean on them in times of you know, those seasons that are a little tougher where you can't always get that time for yourself in, but it's so needed. Like asking, like I could ask my sister, Hey, can you like, I like just needed to like take a shower when Bo was born. I'm like, I have no time. Can I just, she just came over so I could take a shower. I'm like, thank you so much. You know, like just like little things like that, being able to just like reach out to a friend, any kind of support system, and they can help you through those tougher times is I think important for people to know too, because it's, it's definitely not a sign of weakness. I think it's a sign of strength and you being able to say, Hey, I need help. And this is like what I need. And yeah, you're recognizing being, it. Yeah. Knowing. Just recognizing that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that you asked your sister for help. I was <laughs> yeah. not heard about that the first time around. <laughs> But yeah, like just those little things where somebody makes you a meal and they bring it over, like mm-hmm. that means the world, you know, and it, yeah. the little booties and all those things are so cute, but like the real gift <laughs> is like when you can offer, um, yeah, a way to, to support the right. mom after the baby's born. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know. And it's like 
my mom was here, which was so nice. She came. And so like, she's like, I'll like, just help with the laundry. And like, I can yeah. make you dinner. And like, if you need to sleep, I can watch the baby. So it's like, that like first week of help is so huge. And I think sometimes like, as a new mom, you might think I have to, I have to be able to do this all myself. Yeah. I have to be able to have it all together. And like, you know, my husband doesn't know how to do anything or they're doing it all wrong. And it's like, no, they're there to help you. Like, this is new to both of you. You can lean on other people. It's okay. It so I've done more than one way too. Yes. That's the other thing. It's like, try not to micromanage. <laughs> but it is, it's funny too, because I like keep, I'm like thinking about how it was when I had Bo. And now that I'm having, you know, another baby, I'm like, I, I'm i hoping like I can, you know, now I have a little more experience. I'm like, I think I'll be better be a little more relaxed about it it'll be fine i'll definitely be asking for tons of help (laughs) but yeah well i feel like this has just been like such a refreshing and fun and just informative conversation is almost like this little like safe space that we've created that we can talk about like all these vulnerable things and mom gill and just making time for self-care so Catherine, thank you so much for coming on today i think it's just been you know you've just been such like a bright refreshing light today it's been great so thank you so much for chatting with us today So why don't you tell everyone where like they can find you, like what you have going on. Go ahead. (laughs) Thank you so much for, for allowing me to be here, for having this really important conversation for moms Mm -hmm. and for, yeah, I I love your podcast. I'm so excited that you guys are doing (laughs) this. And I just, I mean, honestly, I love partnering with you guys in any way. It's, it's the work Mm -hmm. you do. Um, But yeah, so you can find me at, at soulcaremom.com. And if you would like some support around having sprinkling that self-care into your day or starting your morning with self-care, um, go to soulcaremom.com forward slash kickstart, and you can grab a free gift from me that will help you to start your morning with five simple steps that you can do before you even get out of bed so that you're starting your morning with that full cup. Um, I think you'll love it, but yeah, any, any other resources or support that you need, um, yeah, soulcaremom.com is the best place to go. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Catherine. And we will be back next week with another episode. Thanks for joining us today on She's Got It Together. It's been a real journey sharing and laughing with you all. We hope you're walking away with a smile on your face and a bit more confidence in your step. Remember, you're not alone in this crazy ride called life. We're all in this together, one day at a time. Don't forget to subscribe, leave us a review, and of course, share this podcast with all the incredible women in your life. Join us next week for more stories, more laughs, and more real talk. Until then, keep embracing your unique journey and remember, you've got it together more than you think.